note we pray, O God, of all grace and goodness and mercy, and above all truth, Lord, because if there isn't a truth somewhere, then it wouldn't much matter, Lord, what you are, because we know that you change, you could vacillate. A God of vicissitudes, you never know where we stand, but we're grateful you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, and proving it by vindication. We thank you for that, Lord. May we know you, Lord, this vindicated one, whom to know right is life eternal. And may the word that we hear and study tonight, brought by the prophet, be without error in any way at all, Lord, but rather just open to us more and more, because we know his word is just like a Bible. So we commend ourselves tonight, Lord, to you, and by your grace and especially your love to the truth that lies in you, that we may see you fully exposed in our midst tonight by this word, and we apart, Lord, living on it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, we're going to be taking the little message called Ashamed. You may have gotten books, and you'll notice you who are not quite used to being in, my, in our meetings here that I often change the wording, not that I change any meaning whatsoever, but I may change the grammar <clears throat> and insert a word <clears throat> that has been left out, like Brother Branham leaves out pronouns and things like that. But on page 17, reading from the book of Mark, verses 34 to 38, wherein Brother Branham gets the context for his text and his uh, title, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall a profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Now, Brother Branham says, I want to take a little text from there, if it would be called that, ashamed. <clears throat> I know, you know I like that. Whosoever is ashamed of me and my words, I'll be ashamed of him. Now, Instantly, I want you to notice that Brother Branham <clears throat> is, because of knowing what's in this message, and you already perhaps have read it, so I say instantly, I want you to notice that Brother Branham is using the word and, which is K in the Greek, not only as <clears throat> a conjunction, but actually even more so as a preposition which is even. Now, if you go down to paragraph 120 for a minute, then we'll get back to this other. Brother Branham says, you notice there is so much of that today, especially on the subject that I'm speaking of, ashamed of the word. Now, he and the word are the same. So, Brother Branham actually is quoting here, and you might say it like this, whosoever <clears throat> is ashamed of me, even of my words, I'll be ashamed of him. And you'll notice as Brother Branham goes along, and as we have studied for years his messages, that this is perennially true in every single message. It is not the person that is subject to uh, criticism until, of course, you go to Godhead. And then again, the person is not subject. It is the understanding. What is subject to criticism is always the revealed word. You understand what I'm saying? So Brother Branham says, ashamed. That's what I'm going to talk on. <clears throat> Whosoever is ashamed of me, even of my words, so that there cannot be any separation. To be ashamed of him would be ashamed of his word because you don't know him outside of the word. See? And to be ashamed of his word, if it is his word, then you've got to be ashamed of him because you just wouldn't want to have an affiliation with that person. See? <clears throat> now, the, 
The word ashamed could also be translated embarrassed. You know, you are faced with something that you're embarrassed about. Uh, you're being ashamed of it. Now, <clears throat> what Brother Branham is speaking here is the term peer pressure. But in this respect, it is adult peer pressure. That people don't want to be branded as different unless it keeps them in the category but superior within the category. You don't want to be known as a fire out complete goof off. <clears throat> but if you're with a bunch of goof offs or conservatives, no matter what it is, you want to have preeminence, you want to shine, you want to be somebody. There is in man the nature that fell, where Satan wanted to be somebody more than he was. So he's talking of a peer pressure uh, that is around the world. <clears throat> People just don't want to be different to the extent of being branded. And there's a peculiar uh, aspersion attached to it. They like to be glorified as someone special. See? <clears throat> so they're embarrassed. That's what he's saying. The embarrassment is where you really aren't accepted. Now, there's a, <clears throat> a false conception in the world today about history. You know that the Islamic people, the descendants of Ishmael, the circumcised heathen, the Brother Branham exposed in India, Shiites and Jains and so on, <clears throat> when they began conquering the Christians in Africa, they did not conquer them as people believe they conquered them, which is by the sword because they have a religion of the sword. They ostracized the Christians and would not let them have any part in society. And Christianity died under them. I wonder if the Antichrist religious system is going to do the same thing. It will. <clears throat> so Brother Branham is saying here, uh, if we have a Christ who is identical to his word, for Rima and Logos are the same, and the presentation of that Christ is one wherein it is said in John 1, where the only begotten Son declared him, which is comes from the term exegesis, which is to lead forth by words, <clears throat> then if you would dare to begin to explain him and yourself and your relationship in a manner which is different from others, even though you could be 100% right, it would cause a problem. Now, not necessarily with you as being ashamed, because we hope that wouldn't be it. But this lies there as a possibility. Now, <clears throat> being ashamed implies something else. It shows that you are not sure of what you're talking about. <clears throat> now, if you're sure what you're talking about, you may feel a little different because you are different. But if you know what you're talking about, you can come out swinging. And let me tell you something. Cursed is every man whose sword doesn't draw blood. I remember one somebody told a certain friend of mine, <clears throat> and I forget who it was. I can't remember names at this point or maybe later on. He mentioned how then when he came to this message, he just simply dropped it. He wouldn't fight. And this friend of mine says, I don't understand that guy. If a thing's worth having, it's worth fighting for not fighting about. That's not necessary. But fighting for. Now, if you know what you're talking about and have the assurance that you know what you're talking about, you can tell anybody that. You're not ashamed. <clears throat> but if you feel put out, out of place, it shows that you're not sure. Now, definitely, he is testifying to his own ministry as well as illustrating the impregnability of truth, as stated in Matthew 7, 
24 to 29. <clears throat> now let's take a look at that. Wherefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine, and Brother Branham categorically said, hearing is to understand. Like the mother says, do you hear me? And she's screaming, oh, Johnny hears her all right. But he doesn't intend to hear True. And to listen to her and do it. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. See? I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat upon that house, and it didn't fall because it was founded upon a rock. i got to tell you something. That's not just 100% true. It's a little off as far as English is concerned. If you got what this man is saying, Jesus, he's saying, look, the house and the rock is one. Because I can build a house upon a rock like the three little pigs. And a huff and a puff, it's gone. He's not just saying build upon a rock. He's telling you that he's building your house on a rock and from the rock. Why? Because he's saying he that hears these sayings of mine and does them. He's like a man building his house, his life on a rock. And he is a rock structure with the rock. We're one with the word, right? Come on. That's exactly what it is, one of the word. <clears throat> he that heareth these sayings of mine. He, he, he doesn't listen. He's a foolish person. He's built his house upon the sand. He hasn't got the right foundation. He's not part of a rock foundation. So no matter how he builds his house, it isn't going to work. So he's telling you the old proverb, if the Lord doesn't build the house, they labor in vain who builds it. See? The rains descended, floods came, the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass those that heard these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. <clears throat> now the scribes were mealy-mouthed. A scribe is a person who should write and shut up. He should write and pass it to the individual like a tract. That's right. Wise men handle scripture, the prophets bring it, but a scribe just writes it. And these guys were trying to explain things, and they said, well, listen, I wrote it. I wrote the church aid book for Brother Branham, but you better believe. That sure wasn't my thinking. I had to get mine all turned around. Some, some took me four and a half hours of constant back and forth arguing. And one took about 11 days just trying to get all the time I could with it. That's just a couple of points there. All right, let's go further. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. <clears throat> I can find what I want here. Paul is speaking <clears throat> here in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the, month of, in the mouth of truth of witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before and foretell you as, as if I were present the second time, being absent, and I write to them which hitherto have sinned and to all others, that if I come again, I will not spare. Seek ye... Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. Do you think that's a little phrase? Or do you think he's accurately defending himself as to a true experience? Well, it's got to be a true experience because he's involved in a fight. <clears throat> he said the same thing back there that I say today. You can do anything you want about me, although I don't like it, but don't stick your nose in my ministry. He said, well, Brother Bale, you don't have what it takes. Shut up. I listen to a prophet. The ministry is solid with the word. If, he, if I go down... I believe he'll go down. If he'll go down, I've gone down. If he doesn't come back, forget it. I've turned my corners. 
I'm not sitting on a fence. Actually, I'm flattening my back looking up. If you want to know the truth, you do what you want. That's your business. Seek ye proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, <clears throat> but is mighty in you. Vindication sold you, and you have the results of my vindication. Ha! That's beautiful. I didn't hear a scream. You must have missed it. We could be a little more Pentecostals than dead Methodists and Baptists. A little roller coaster religion won't hurt you as long as it's all up and not coming down. You just keep coasting up. Listen, you hear what this man said? He said, Christ in me speaking. And he said, there's evidence of the reality of it. <clears throat> now, for though he was crucified in weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates? I'd got your thing to turn around. But I trust that ye shall know that you're not reprobates. Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, <clears throat> but that you should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. <clears throat> you know, you could have foot washing right now and go home. Do you realize there's nobody going to change this message and nobody can do anything about it? There is a vindicated prophet the same as Paul was because Alpha's Omega. Just think, he said, the same pillar of fire that brought the word of God is here revealing the word of God. And Paul said, I am vindicated. I've read that to you. I read it down in Beaumont, chapter 15 of Romans. <clears throat> First Corinthians, second chapter. He said, I am vindicated. How far has the world gone away from truth? The newspaper men run the whole world. I just read the day before yesterday, the Pope is being given credit for the peace in the world. He never went to Gorbachev. He didn't do one thing. <clears throat> He's a liar and the truth is not in him. He's antichrist. He's of the devil. And the whole world thinks he's doing some great big fancy thing. That mealy mouth hypocrite. Amen. Well, you say, Brother Vail, even Paul said, don't speak of the, you know, uh, evil of the, of the rulers. Well, I ain't going to take it back anyway. God can smack my hands for it. I'm not being facetious. That's, I just not going to take it back. I refuse. You can, we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. <clears throat> it tells us here categorically, when something is vindicated by God, every single thing you do, even though you think you're going against it, is going for it. Why? because it's going to bring the wrath and judgment of God. Right? <clears throat> now, let me tell you something. Brother Branham says here, you can tell anybody you're not ashamed. You just go moving ahead. I can prove by Brother Branham's own tapes that he backed away many times. He didn't deny the truth. It just wasn't worth the candle. Oh, oh, you could be right, I could be wrong. Why'd he say it? It wasn't worth it. <clears throat> there was nothing there to talk to. Why do you think Jesus passed the multitudes and picked one person? Nothing there to do. Now notice he says here in Paragraph 120. You notice there is so much of that today, especially on the subject I'm speaking of, ashamed of the word. Now, you notice the message is not shamed of the person categorically. It is shamed of the word connected with the person that has been vindicated or is strange to the teaching and the traditions that whatever church applies to the individual known as Christ. Now, if you want to put a little sweet little baby in a manger, and one of the nice he came and died for us, 
In the meantime, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Where is Santa Claus with presents coming? Christmas Day. I didn't know that you could have Jesus jingle bell. What would happen to America if you took away Santa Claus? Christianity. The whole church is built on Santa Claus lies. <clears throat> My kids still can't stand me because I wouldn't lie to them. I'm not lying to put My wife can argue she wants, but she won't argue. She knows it's the truth. My kids want Santa Claus. What do you want? You ain't going to get it here. I hate Santa Claus. <laughs> Stupid jackass old liar never gave me anything on it. Lousy bunch of relatives said promised everything. <clears throat> then one time I got two stories. He's supposed to have a sleigh and snow. And that Christmas he didn't have any snow. So I said, well, what, what, well, how is he going to get here then? Well, he said, snow falls in front of him. <clears throat> the other brother and sister said, well, he, he got wheels on it this trip or something. Santa Claus religion. <clears throat> All right, he said, ashamed of his word. <clears throat> the same thing is said in verse 35 as in verse 38. Whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels. <clears throat> Now, if you're out there losing your life apart from the word, you're just kidding yourself. It's in vain. And if you're out there losing your life for the wrong revelation, you're still kidding yourself. It's in vain. So what are you going to do? But Brother Branham took his text down below, ashamed of me and my words. Now he says, now he and the word are the same. And yet we've got people running around and they make the great big issue of, of that Rima is not Logos. Rima is Logos. How would you like to produce a baby with an egg and a sperm? Well, why don't you? If you think you can produce Logos without Rima, there's something wrong with your thinking. Because Logos is simply Rima come to life and into a form. Notice he said, they're ashamed of the word. Now, he and the word are the same. In the beginning was the word. The word is with God and the word was God. And if you, he said, if you make Logos anything but God, then you have three gods. <clears throat> it's simply a mystery. And I'm not trying to flake out on a mystery. The fact of the mystery, we understand exactly how God did it because the prophet told us. All right, Rima and Logos is the same. If he is the manifestation of the word, as it says in Genesis 3:15, the seed of the woman, <clears throat> and if he's the same in Isaiah, he's Emmanuel, God with us, and as it says in Luke 1 and 35, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and that holy thing born you should call the Son of God. And he was that one. Then you can see that Logos is actually Rima in a form, and in this case, living form, and it's God. Because we're dealing with him. Then he goes on to say, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The same yet, then he says, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why does he bring that <clears throat> to our attention? You can just let that sit on the grounds if you understand that God appeared in human flesh. But why does he do it today? Is he using John 1 and 1? That's in the beginning was the word. <clears throat> and John 1, 14. <clears throat> the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Connecting with Hebrews 13 and 8, same yesterday, day, and forever. Is it a mistake, a slip of the tongue, 
Or is he saying the word of God again is manifest in human flesh in this hour? <clears throat> Here there's a lot of things hard to understand, hard to take. Kids can't take the fact that their parents are their bosses and they should listen. Do you know what kids are like these days? And I rub it in a little bit because you girls better watch yourselves. A little teenage girl was asked by a reporter bringing up the subject of abortion. And she said, if a girl is old enough to have a baby, she's old enough to have an abortion. That is the mentality of the kids in school. I would take mine out and train them myself. What do you think of that? That's the truth. I'm not kidding you. It's exactly what she said. Now, what does that little whippersnapper know about life? They've gone to become brute beasts with no intelligence. And let me tell you, the smarter people get, the further they're going to get away from God because by reason man knew not God or by wisdom. They won't stop and think. <clears throat> Brother Brown is stating here categorically that once more God will be made manifest in human flesh and this does not only encompass the prophet, but it encompasses a bride who will be thoroughly and only the word of God and she alone and no other member a part of it and no member missing. There will be a virgin bride standing on this earth just before the rapture and at the time, that's just before the resurrection, I beg your pardon. <clears throat> and at the time of the resurrection, and together will form the perfect living virgin bride body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Catholics try to tell you, wait for you take and that's a, the body of Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh boy, that's the stupidest jackass thing ever in all my life. I thought it'd be nice tonight, but how can I be nice? <laughs> what do you do with snakes? I, can't, I wouldn't have the guts to do it, but I've seen people pick up a snake and just crack them like that and break their necks. <laughs> I just soon stay away from them. Brother Branham categorically is stating that the Word of God is made in, into human flesh in this last hour. The prophet said, Brother Branham, and he's hated for this, the prophet is the living word of God made manifest, and yet they haven't got enough brains to turn to John chapter 40, where John the Baptist is quoting from over in Luke, and he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. I am the living word of God spoken by the prophets, the Rima, now come into Logos. I am the living word of Isaiah 40 and 3. William Brannan could stand and say, I am Malachi. Four, five, and six. <clears throat> In me is Luke 17 and 30. Because he said, the Son of Man is neither the pillar of fire nor the prophet, the form of the Holy Ghost, but it comes through the individual. It's hard for people to accept that William Branham, a prophet, can be God to the people. You know why? They want to be their own gods. Satan wanted to be his own god. Whose side do you want? As I told you, Satan is so diabolical. He is such a rough character that even after the great white throne judgment and the entire resurrection, he brings all his forces together and attempts to destroy God. What kind of a person is that? Would you want to be around that kind of person? <clears throat> Do you want to join forces with him? They're joining right now with him. And they're happy. Now, Brother Branham, 121 paragraph says, So, Whosoever is ashamed of me and my word, <clears throat> and he and his word are one, so being ashamed of his word in this sinful present generation, I'll be ashamed of him. Now he's telling you the exact meaning of that verse. The introductory word, so. So. It's a little word, but it has a powerful punch. It means thus, 
based exactly on this here I am coming forth with this so the introductory word so definitely states that as it was in the case of the 30 to the 33 and a half years that's three and a half years AD of Jesus ministry so it is today let's go back to John 10 and see that ministry <clears throat> And verses 30 to 33. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stone again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of these works do we stone you, me? And Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone thee, but for blasphemy. Because thou being a man, makest thyself God. And Jesus answered and said, Is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods, if he called them gods, unto whom the word of the Lord came, and that's the prophets, and the scripture cannot be broken, and he's a prophet. Say ye of him whom the Lord is sanctified, and Moses spoke of, and said in the world, thou blasphemest, because I say I am the son of God. And if you're a son, you are peculiar in this respect, the firstborn, is entitled to half of what everything the Father has, and the Father then is literally indwelling that person, because God indwells the prophets. Now he said, yeah, this is your own law tells you this. And if I am that prophet that Moses spoke of, then why do you not understand what I am saying? And he said, I'll tell you why you don't understand. Because there is no room in you for the word. It's the same as, as the serpent having a place for a soul but didn't have a soul. <clears throat> so when he made it up with Eve and she had a place for a soul and a soul, then a soul could come into there. But remember, it was not the soul of Adam and Eve that they passed on. No, sir. It wasn't a human soul <clears throat> in the legitimate sense. <clears throat> because you could tell how he acted. Different thing entirely. Okay, this has absolutely nothing to do with anything. <clears throat> Brother Branham saying here, now whosoever is ashamed of me and my word, and he and his word are one. See, having based it upon back over here in page 17, in the beginning was the word, the word is with God, same as day, day, and forever. <clears throat> he threw the whole thing in right to this present hour. God and his word one, manifestation, truth, now he said, are you going to take it? Now he said, here, I'll be ashamed of he being ashamed of his word in this sinful present generation. I'll be ashamed of him. <clears throat> now what's he referring to? Since he's used the word so and brought us to this point, then there has to be the same conditions that were back there. Okay, let's go to Matthew 12. Here's the picture. Brother Branham used Matthew 4. I use Matthew 12 because it's more, it's clear. And he says concerning Jesus. It might be fulfilled. Verse 17, spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved whom my soul is well pleased. I'll put my spirit upon him. He shall, he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. When did he do it? He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. When did that happen? A bruised reed shall he not break, a smoking flash shall he not quench. When did that happen? It tells you when it's going to till he sent for judgment unto victory, and in his name shall the Gentile trust. It tells you right here that this same one, this pre-existent Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, that Brother Branham said like a light coming out of the Father, and they're playing around the Father's throne, creating the universes, God being in him. He said that pre-existent one who pled, give me your glory, the same glory I had with you before, that same one that came down here into a human form, that same one is right here doing exactly what he did in the form of a human body. He's doing it now in the spirit and moving through a prophet. That's right. <clears throat> the same one as in Luke 17, 20 to 30. The kingdom of God is in your midst. You'll want one of the days of the Son of Man, but you won't see him until after the death and the resurrection. And at a certain time, the days of the Son of Man will repeat. And at that time, there'll be a separation. And in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven to shout with the voice of the archangel and <clears throat> the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which living our remains shall be changed and caught up to meet the Lord in the air. The one Lord comes on down. 
but the Lord at his right hand we meet in the air. And there that spirit becomes incarnate to us. It's Malachi 4, 5, and 6. <clears throat> Behold, I send Elijah the prophet, and he'll turn the hearts of children back to the Father. Absolutely, that's what John the Baptist did. <clears throat> it is Revelation 3, in that hour of 14, when the world is in gross sin, the apex, the climax of iniquity amongst the people, that's when he shows himself, this sinful, rotten generation. Now, do you think the church is going to believe that? The, you know, if the Pope was the real vicar of Christ, he'd say, Garby, old boy, let me tell you something. You're a politician. And your politics are going to die. And your political endeavors are going to die. Because the God in heaven sent a vindicated prophet and preached judgment. And the old Pope sits there. Yes, I'm bringing peace, yes. <laughs> Looking like some senile old woman, some fat old gal. God help me. Shit, you this priest. I hope I have much fun being tortured as I'm having right now. <laughs> how can anybody, how can anybody demean themselves? I can't change my attitudes. <clears throat> I never will change my attitudes. Certain great preachers, names known all over this world, had a church in Canada, Vancouver. I went one night thinking he might be there to preach. Instead, he had his youth leader. If that wasn't some little effeminate, perverted homosexual, I've never seen one. I went out of that church spitting tax, and I said, I'd sooner have a stud in my church who seduced every woman and that kind of filth around me. I don't change. Now we notice if somebody says, are you a Christian? <clears throat> Very popular to say, oh, I'm a Christian. This speaks of, of accepting and identifying with the person in the historical and accepted sense. <clears throat> Jesus, <clears throat> one of three gods. Very fine person. Died upon the cross. <clears throat> but can they accept today in the sense of what the Word says, starting the Alpha of 2 Corinthians 11? I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy of espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste version to Christ. But I fear it's happened already. Lest by any means as a certain beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom you have not preached, another spirit you have not received, and another gospel. How far can you go? <clears throat> you got a fake Jesus, a fake spirit, and a fake gospel. That happened right back in Paul's day. <clears throat> Now, in Revelation, the third chapter, it says they're wretched, miserable, naked, blind, so seduced <clears throat> by their own thoughts that they think they're rich and creased in goods and lack nothing. Will they accept that? Uh -uh. <clears throat> they won't accept that. Let me tell you something. Before you can come to where this message is, you've got to accept that. You got us. Every table is full of vomit, and I've been the chief chucklegger at the tables of vomit. How'd you like to enjoy puke? Have you ever vomited where it came up in your nose? It's delicious. It is the stinkingest stuff under high heaven. It burns your throat. The nausea that nauseated nauseates you again. And many times it just comes up and goes right down. And dogs love it. Good thing I'm saying this tonight instead of tomorrow before dinner. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. I say, well, I'm not eating it. 
You can say anything you want. It won't bother me. My sister-in-law couldn't stand eating an egg. Once she saw an egg open and the little chicken inside, the belly was all the yolk. And I said, but Carol, I'm not eating that egg. Well, who's sensible? <laughs> I'm not eating vomit. I can talk about it. Walk right away from it. They won't take it. Oh, I'm a Christian, all right. <clears throat> now, he just gives some illustrations here, and, you know, and, and talks nice like something. He just bringing it out here. Like um, back here in paragraph 120, where he says, you notice, uh, they're ashamed of the word. Now, here's some of the things. He just, he just kind of glosses this over. Then he hits it. <clears throat> But do you believe the word of God where it says these signs shall follow them that believe? How many churches really believe that? You know why they don't? Because they can't produce them. Or oh, even ministers will blush. <clears throat> See, they're afraid of being different. He said, are you ashamed of, say, uh, divine healing? Are you ashamed of the full gospel? Are you ashamed of your Pentecost experience? I'm going to tell you, says he, that's being ashamed of his word. Because he said, what I'm talking about, quoting the Bible <clears throat> in reference to you, and you're receiving and experience it, why he said, that's his word made flesh in you. You know something? We like to get healed, don't we? How much time have we got on the first side? You turned already? Okay, how many of us like to be healed? Say, oh, great. Oh, I just love that because, you see, now my hands, and they do feel a lot better, too. <clears throat> my hands feel this way, my feet feel this way, my mind is so clear. And Oh, boy, you know, sure nice to feel good. Just a minute. Do you know that that's not the whole truth? It's the Word of God being made manifest in you. See, you're looking at a superficial thing, and the prophet brings out a glory. The prophet brings out a glory. Now, oh, praise God, I was healed. Let's go through the healing line. Let's have this and let's have that. And listen, I'm all for it. <clears throat> but that's not what the prophet said it is. He said, that's his word made flesh in you. <clears throat> you got healed flesh now. You got baptized flesh. You got sanctified flesh. Right, let's just go over here to 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> I beg your pardon, Ephesians 1. Here's what Paul says to those Ephesian people. In whom ye trusted, <clears throat> after you heard the word of, of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believe, you received with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession on the praise of the glory. Any man full of the Holy Ghost absolutely knows positively he's a candidate for the first resurrection. No ifs, ands, buts. Where is that in our midst tonight? I'm a, lot of, a lot of it's my fault, the way I preach and say, look, I can't prove anything. <clears throat> but the prophet said, if you believe this word, you got it. <clears throat> I said, we've turned a corner. I'm not sitting on a fence. I'm flat in my back looking up. What for? To get this. I feel myself, and I don't want to say this like any boasting because God forbid any man boast, but I feel really if what I'm teaching is wrong from what the prophet said, I can say he ain't got it either as far as I'm concerned because I believe I'm word for word with what he teaches. <clears throat> Look at it. Let's go to Romans 8. Romans 8, 10, 11. But, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. <clears throat> I don't care if you're born again. You're going to die, die, die. Your body. <clears throat> so then where is Christ? Not in the body. He's in the soul. Christ be in the body. because. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. <clears throat> now listen to me. How many people even know that God has descended? How many know 
that he in Revelation 5 and 1, his Revelation 10 and 1, and came right down here to the prophet. Revelation 10 and 10. How many know that? Hardly anybody. <clears throat> because most don't want to know. Now, how many so-called Branhamites really know? And I want to ask you a question. Who is the one that came down? J-U-D-G-E, judge. How many know that? <clears throat> then judgment has been sent. That's white throne. It's going on now. Oh, you say, just, just a minute. No, just a minute. I'm going to just a minute you. You don't understand. Time and eternity have blended. Now, can you set your heart and mind to it? You know what they say, how to get your thumbs going? Thump, thump, thump. They go boing, boing, boing. Start knocking your head a bit. Isn't your thymus needs a jolt? It's the brain needs a jolt. That's right. The brain needs a jolt because this is the hour of repentance. The church has one commission given to her, and that's repent. One covenant, repent. And only God can grant repentance. People don't want to listen to it. They're not concerned. This one will quicken our mortal bodies. What is that? 1 Corinthians 15. When does it start? When the Lord descends with the shout and becomes present. Okay. <clears throat> now, he says here, that's being ashamed of his word. That's his word made flesh in you, like John the Baptist, Isaiah 40. How so? Because these are not only written about, but entered into. Healing is word. Baptism is word. Not to be relegated to history or set aside as some who would excuse themselves, but to say this is the living word of God, and that living word will live in me, and my flesh will be one with it. Well, say, now, just a minute. No, no, you don't just a minute me. I just read it to you. And if Christ be in you, the body's dead because of sin. <clears throat> and if you get healed, your body will still die. And when you're sanctified, your body will still die. And you'll still be tempted. And you'll still be tried. I'm not saying you're in the millennium. I'm not saying you're resurrected. I'm just quoting you the word here. <clears throat> Doesn't obviate that. You've got to believe what the prophet said. Just like Paul said, we have become the righteousness of God. You say, oh man, oh man, oh man. <clears throat> That's right. Don't try to figure it. Just believe it. Because I'm telling you something. You cannot ever have faith reach any degree of latitude and peak in your life until you confess. Because faith is a confessed thing and the thing that is confessed is the Word of God, and it is always against the wisdom of man, but never necessarily against his conscience. Unless the conscience is full of the wisdom of man, then you're messed up. <clears throat> You've got to literally defy the hosts of hell yourself and everything else but God. And then you don't defy God when you... Go in God. Now, he said, being ashamed of his word, that's his word made manifest in you. In other words, Brother Brown has said, the word of this hour, which is what? Immortality. That's for this hour. And if you are ashamed to associate yourself with the word of immortality, as has been delivered in this hour, not according to creeds and dogmas, but according to a vindicated prophet, if you are ashamed of that, you are finished. <clears throat> what about the guys that fight it? I got a phone call just the other day again. Always the same old criticism. Same, always the same old criticism. How dare you stand up for the truth? <clears throat> I'm all supposed to lick somebody's feet. Well, I never did like toe jam, raspberry jam. Those things are good. But toe jam, I'm not interested in. 
All right, now <clears throat> we're going to read the next paragraph. So his word has to live itself out for every generation. It lived itself in the days of Moses because in that day the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 1, God in sundry times and divers manners spake to the fathers in the prophets. Now he's quoting the King James. The word in is should be there instead of by. All right, now let's look at it again. So his word has to live itself out for every generation. It lived itself in the days of Moses. Now watch. <clears throat> he said the word of God according to to experiences that are in the word as healing and baptism and such must be lived out in you. But there's something separate from that. And that's the word of God that lives itself out in every generation, like right there. Had nothing to do with you and me. <clears throat> we didn't ask for it. We don't produce it. We don't maintain it. All we do is sit back and either believe it or don't believe it. And he speaks of Moses. <clears throat> now let's go to Moses. In Exodus 3 and 10. You know, I started this little message here right down the middle. So I said, oh, goody, I can be through in two sermons. I knew I was lying. I never told you that. I just lied to myself. You know, I like to lie to myself because sometimes it's so nice. You know what it is? Lie to yourself. <clears throat> oh, I really feel great today. Got a million dollars. Yippee, you know. Going home to him and the band of angels. That's not a lie. <clears throat> I'm going to get through this for a while. I said Exodus 3, didn't I? Okay. Let's read Exodus 3, 1 to 10. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, and the priest of Midian, and he led, he led the, the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire in the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burnt with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I'll now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush should not burn. He was a kind of a scientist. And when the Lord saw he turned aside to see, God called out in the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. He said, don't draw nigh, put your shoes off and your feet for the place you're standing on is holy ground. Moreover, I, I'm going to tell you, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he's afraid to look upon God. And God said, I've surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster for I know their sores. And I'm come down to deliver them out of the land of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of, the land, great, that, and out of that land into a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. I'm going to get rid of them all. Now therefore behold the crowd of the children of Israel come to me, I have also seen the oppression where the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, their children, out of Egypt. Now, that was what was given for the people. <clears throat> now, on top of that, they had healing. They had shoes that didn't rot. They had clothes that didn't rot. They had bodies that didn't stink, even though they didn't have a man. They had man out of heaven. That was nice. But the message for the people to be worked out for the people was not that. <clears throat> that was to get them in the time of transition into what was for them. We today have the same thing through a prophet, a ministry, a message that puts us in transition into the millennium. Well, that's what you're looking at. Right? Right. No problem. Good. We understand that. <clears throat> All right. Now, this sinful generation won't take it because they're identified with an historical Christ. Oh, the God's not going to come down and appear like you say. That, that, that oh, fat pillar of fire. That's hogwash. Oh, you, you can see all kinds of things caught on cameras. <clears throat> oh, yeah. What about thus saith the Lord? Oh, we've had them too. <clears throat> oh, yeah, they got all the answers, and they're all wrong. Oh, this message for the hour. Why do you think Brother Branham had a spectacular ministry? It was so part of it in attracting you, you would experience <clears throat> the healings and the other things, the discernment and all. <clears throat> but what was his ministry? A message. He has descended with a shout. You understand? That's it. And he says right now, it took a prophet back there. <clears throat> what about today? Today is, is, is 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. 
Now concerning the living and the dead, I'm going to tell you about them. The word to live itself out today is 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 23. The time of the resurrection and the presence of the Lord. Then what? 51 to 55, where it tells you how we get changed to immortality. <clears throat> then what's the next thing we learn? Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. It's the same thing. The Spirit of God comes down with the power of the resurrection, giving us a revelation, puts us into the, in the, into the resurrection rapture. <clears throat> what else is it? It's, it's, it's Philippians 3 and 20, 21. Our citizenship is from heaven, so he comes down to change our vile bodies and give a body like his. Now, what's his body? Ha ha, the body's not here. But he takes us up, and then he goes into his body. <clears throat> Incarnates himself. Then you're back to first, that's only four against. The Lord's doing it all. See? Now. God in sundry times and divers manners, in the prophets. And Brother Bran is proclaiming himself the prophet of this hour to bring the word of God. And those prophets, now watch, and those prophets. The church got so all twisted up <clears throat> that God had to send those prophets. Had to send them prophets. They couldn't get out of it. They, just, they were just too messed up. God had to do something. Those prophets, those daring messengers of God, came without church, without denomination, without permission. That's what he's saying. Came on God said, so nobody else's. <clears throat> without organization, without anything. Defied kings, kingdoms, churches, everything else. And they were brought before the priests. And they weren't ashamed because they had directly, thus saith the Lord. Brother Branham is associating fear and shame together based on the fact that the man is afraid because he doesn't know. <clears throat> now, he's not talking about somebody that does know, like poor old Galilee. <laughs> they took poor old Galilee and the, and the high priest of Catholicism and said, well, listen, but I want to tell you, the word's flat. And if you don't say the world is flat, we're just going to cut your head off. Well, he said, just come to think that the world's flat. <laughs> and he went outside muttering, it's round just the same. <laughs> that's right, that's true, that's history. <clears throat> well, praise the Lord for history. They had thus set the Lord directly. If you notice, now Brother Bass speaking here, prophets and vindication, and though the prophets come, <clears throat> remember, everybody has a big mouth. I've got one, you've got one. And we got two ears and nothing much in between them. That's the truth. If we got a spark down here, we're saved. It's going to help us. But everybody will say, listen, I want to tell you something. If a genuine prophet came, which ain't going to come anyway, I know it. Well, you know right there that they're never going to know one because they don't believe he's going to come. Right. Now, if you believe positively, there were such things as reindeers, but they're extinct. Not one left. And a reindeer suddenly appeared. He said, caribou? With round horns. Yes, it's caribou. Kind of small, but caribou. Or maybe an elk, the pygmy elk. Ah, mutation. You see what I mean? How are you going to accept a prophet if you don't believe in prophets, though you say historically there were prophets? <clears throat> what about the poor carrier pigeon? It's gone. You'll never breed it back. There's no way. Nothing. If you saw a carrier pigeon today, you'd be in the millennium. So people can't take prophets. They don't believe in them. <clears throat> no way, shape, and form. They say, hey, listen, we believe the Bible. Bless God, I know this is the book of God. I don't need prophets. There's the prophets. What if this book said a prophet was going to come? Well, that's to the Jews. Huh? How come these same stupid Christians, if they fell heir to 50 billion tons of gold, would say, give it to Zimbabwe? No. They said, let them die with their AIDS. They'd take their money, put it in big, heavy casts, metal casts on the ground and sit on it. <clears throat> no, you're not going to, brother, sister, I just want to give you a picture of people. Don't, I'm not talking about you. 
I'm talking about what's in the human race because of serpent seed. I'll tell you, there's one doctrine I believe in is serpent seed, period. If you notice the prophet in one sense of the word in the Old Testament when he, had, when he said, thus saith the Lord, now watch him, he goes right into the phase of taking the place of God. So, oh my. You notice when he placed out before him, that is, he, he, he manifested by vindication, <clears throat> thus saith the Lord, he fell right into God and he acted as God. Then he gave his message, which was God speaking through him, thus saith the Lord. Now it's strange, very strange, that all ministries can be accepted when explained by a pastor or a teacher, evangelist, <clears throat> missionary. But what about a prophet that brings a word? Well, say, well, there's a prophet in our church and he can foretell events. Well, that takes care of that. But what happened, and this church is in a mess, and the world cannot get out of this mess, and they know something is going to happen drastically. And God always had a prophet then why would he not have a prophet now? Because God knows we need a prophet. I'll tell you why. It's just like poor old Brother Moore, <clears throat> the voice of the, 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 uh, or the herald of, of, of faith. Oh, God, send a prophet. Oh, God, send a prophet. Nations pray. Nations pray. Oh, God, send a prophet. So Brother Branham goes to his home, sits down and eats. And Brother Branham, oh, God, send a prophet. Oh, God, nations, please pray. People pray, pray, pray. God, send a prophet. Nice old guy, but completely vacant. You say, Brother Vail, you're insulting. Listen, I'm serious. Do you understand what happened in a man's home? God send the prophet and God send the prophet? <clears throat> Did you find one article that man wrote about him? Not that I know of. He might have said something. Why didn't he? <clears throat> like Norman Grubb. He embraced ecumenism. So this is it. The great move of God. Known as one of the greatest Christians of the 20th century. Makes you think, doesn't it? Makes you think. What is going on? Could a great man of God turn down a prophet if that prophet had something at all? <clears throat> Why well, they say, well, Lee, it's okay because idiots like you can be easily taken care of. You ask my wife if it's if that easy. 129. I think of the prophets of old when they came with, them, with that message. And it embarrassed the kings. Oh, boy, did it embarrass the kings. It made the people feel uncomfortable. The priests even, they would feel uncomfortable. Because they were supposed to be the leaders, the explainers, you know, the religious men. But when the word came forth in that manner, what manner? Powerful vindication. An energy from God. It exposed them. And they felt embarrassed or ashamed. And I'm going to add to Brother Branham's word. They were downright angry, madder than hornets. The majority. What's Brother Branham doing? Is he jogging our memory? <clears throat> Is he jogging our memory? Prophet, word, word, prophet, prophet, word, word, prophet. Don't get carried away with the vindication, brother, sister. We should be past that a long time ago. <clears throat> we should be right at home with it. And every word that comes forth, we should be so happy in our hearts. Vindicated word. Say, oh, no, prophet of God, vindicate. Vindicated word. Give me some more. Give me the bread of God with vitamins and minerals from heaven. My Lord, have mercy. I'm, I, all the time, I'm, I'm popping pills like a junkie. And I'm getting more poop by popping <coughs> than ever. <coughs> Emma, you know it's true. You pop them with me, so what's it is? You pop them by the hand. Old dog cash gun by, twist my joint, give me some more. <coughs> Oh, we're trying. 
Apply it to spiritual, brother, sister. You can see where something's awfully wrong. Vindication does not always bring approval or obedience. God vindicated himself to Satan, but he didn't lie down. He hasn't lied down, and he's not going to lie down until God throws him down. Many times we see that not many, how many times we see that, not many, too often today. That man you say, I'm a Christian. Right? He's talking about how it happens. Have you received the Holy Ghost in Jubilee? Uh, well, mm, they're, they're, just, they're embarrassed about it. See, they never were taught it, so they don't understand it. Somebody say, do you belong to that group up there that does all that shouting, all that divine healing stuff? Many Christians back up. <clears throat> Lack of maturity, you see. They want to announce, if they've got a denomination now, oh, I'm a Baptist Christian. They expect you to know what a Baptist stands for. So right away now you know what you're talking to. I'm talking to a Baptist Christian. <clears throat> well, I want this little special part in heaven up for Baptists. Well, I'm a Methodist Christian. Now, hold it, hold it, hold it. They just don't mix. Well, there's a big high fence in heaven for those. What are you going to do? <clears throat> You've got a mess like you can't believe. But you see, they identify expecting you to know from the brand they carry. Now, remember, the brand didn't mean a thing. It was the blood tag. They didn't have it. I'm Pesphian. I'm Lutheran. They're not ashamed of that. <clears throat> Why? <clears throat> because that's accepted. Now let me tell you something. Have you ever known a person called a name dropper? Come on, you've done it yourself. These guys are name droppers. Well, I'm Methodist. Oh, uh, with Wesley. Uh, did you know that John West even prayed for his horse and he got better? <laughs> that is a Baptist lie. How would you like to tell the Catholics about St. Francis of Assisi? <clears throat> Some of those old great men of God. In the Dark Ages, absolute, they had to be living Christians. <clears throat> protested the Catholic Church, stood there by themselves, died many times. Luther wasn't the only one protesting the Catholic Church. He was the first successful one that protested the Catholic Church. He wasn't the first. <clears throat> no, they wouldn't identify with that. They want to identify with what's today, name dropping. But when it comes to being a Christian, that can take God's word. In other words, a Christian who can take God's word the way it is, the way it's vindicated, then they're ashamed. I don't belong to any denomination, see? They're ashamed to say that. They've got to be like the rest of the world, <clears throat> represented by some organization. In other words, group testimony by denomination is not a true confession. It is simply a lie because they're ashamed of the truth. <clears throat> I'm a Baptist. Well, what's a Baptist? Well, I'll tell you. I got a 350 page book here. Read it. Not the Bible. My little black book. <clears throat> There's a friend of mine up there in Canada. His dad's died in the old Pentecost. His son can't do a thing with him. When his son brought him face to face with the revealed word of God, backed by vindication, his father grew livid because the boy took it from the Bible. Shut my little black book. I don't need you. A little black book says it. It was a Pentecostal black book out of Newfoundland. And maybe Rich, you and Denise know what I'm talking about. But talk in tongues? No problem. <clears throat> Praise Jesus. Ah, oh, he's the first one to do it. Just climb over benches and people to get out and do it. But the minute of vindication, I got my little black book. That's kind of newfie talk, isn't it? Oh, that's what the son told me. He's been in our church sitting right there the last time. What are you going to do? You know something? If you didn't have representation back there in the beginning, you don't have it now. 
I want to read out of something Brother Branham wrote. <clears throat> the key to the door is on communion. Let's bow our heads before we have the communion. Heavenly Father, we want to close this part of the service thanking you for your goodness to us, your love, your mercy, and all those wonderful things you pour down upon us. We cannot praise you enough for it. We just ask you now, Lord God, as we go to this further part of the service, you'll bless us in this rite and ordinance you gave us, the washing of feet, the communion, the partaking of the emblems, O oh God. We know, Lord, that these things are deadly serious. Sometimes we present them facetiously or in a manner, Lord, that can prick people's conscience or get them such a place they got to listen. They don't lose the word that way, Lord, and I pray now that you'll bring us to that serious part where we will not lose any word of what we heard tonight, but realize we're standing on living ground and living word, and we're a part of it. We're beginning to move. We're beginning to move, oh God, just like those elements are in the ground when Eve got pregnant, those very elements began to move and come together because of a life attraction in a manner of chemistry that you ordained. And we're the same way today in the manner of chemistry that you ordained by the living word of God. We're coming to a place of revitalization, even to immortality, the dead coming out of the ground, moving up. Gravity can't stop us. Going to the great wedding supper, to the reincarnation, to the great God, incarnating himself once more in that divine and heavenly body. What a tremendous day, Father and Son won. <clears throat> we all won too, Lord, in that hour. We know we're coming more and more into it, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. Brother Branham says here now, just a moment, before we start to read on communion, I want to say a thing because it's on communion. And when we come to this altar, there's only one way to come. That is, if we hold the key of faith in our hands, that lets us know that our sins are forgiven. And if we don't have that key to unlock that door, that our sins are forgiven, we have no business at the table of the Lord. Because he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation himself, <clears throat> not discerning the Lord's body, now that is true. Now that doesn't mean you have to know everything. So you start with the fact of what Jesus did for you, accepting, and you move on. And as you move on, you will know if you have truly been accepted of God and one of God because you take the word for the hours and it, as, it, as it's revealed and unravels itself to you. All right. I guess all of us know that today is the National Communion Day. See? This is the day that all churches take communion. It's the National Communion Day over the nation. And I thought it'd be appropriate to speak a word or two on communion before we took it, while the pastor, if he will, be getting the scripture ready for the reading, the order of the Lord's table. Now, this communion, I want to be for about 10 minutes. I think he's quite a bit of more than 10 minutes. <clears throat> this communion we're fixing to take has been the greatest dispute of, dispute of any doctrine in the Bible. That was there, one of their first disputes in the early church. Yes, the, you know, they fussed, you know, and Paul says that in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And today the Protestant or Episcopalian Methodists and many of the Protestant churches will gladly accept Catholic, Roman Catholic doctrine if they could get over the little hump of communion. But they will agree that the priests should be married and be ministers. And the Catholic Church agreed on that several times in their conference and meeting. They agree on it. And they'll agree upon different prayers and so forth. The Protestant Church agree upon it. And the Catechism so forth, little altar here, little altar there. The Catholic Church willing to do it also. But when it comes to communion, there they fail. Anybody that's ever read history knows that. But of course, to my way of thinking, they, got, they have a lot to get away from <clears throat> before I could accept it, you see, because it is in the Bible. In other words, communion is just one of the things. But I want to say one thing to the Catholic Church. Do you know the Catholic Church in the beginning was the, was the Apostolic Pentecostal Church? Certainly was. It was the first beginning of the church, and you see where they, where they got to. They kept taking away the word and injecting a dogma. Now, that's pure history. There's nobody that doesn't know that's history. And if the Pentecostal Church should exist another hundred years, it would go farther off the Bible than the Catholic Church today from the way it's going now. You know why I said that? Because the Catholics are going back to the Bible. And the Pentecostal went plumb beyond it. And we'll talk about that in this ashamed as we get to it. <clears throat> now, it took the Catholic Church several hundred years to get away from it, 300 years in the early church, to the organizing of the Roman Catholic Church, which they started out. And they've caught bringing in big dignitaries and things, and they cut out this, and they put in this, and taken out this, and put in that, took down pagan idols, put up Christian statues, and so forth, and, and just compromising on that. Till they came to what they got now, the Roman Catholic Church. Now, again, I say that historians know that, and the Catholics know that. Now, why do they keep going to it? The devil's got him. It's pure and simple. The devil gets you, the devil gets me. He's got us. <clears throat> We're servants of sin. We've got a rap against us. 
Now, they brought us in church from the 50 years it had been in existence. Or how many years? I don't know. Let's see when the Protestants it started, with, with, especially with uh, Luther. The years where it fell from where it started, it'll, it'll be a worse shape than the Catholic Church in 100 years from now. That's right. That's a big word to say, but just look where they've fallen from. They went right into organization, went right into compromising on this, that, and everything else. And there they go, see, going right back. <clears throat> in other words, if the Roman Catholic Church put in idols and, and named names, what it, they're no different from the Protestants kicking out this and bringing in that. There's no difference. It's the same system. If you change the word of God, look, I don't care. <clears throat> look, how many ways can you kill a tree? Well, I'll pour acid. That'll do it. Well, I'll take a wire and I'll twist it so tight it'll break the bark, get the cambium layer and so on, the tree will die. Very good. What else can you do? I'll keep pulling off the leaves and cutting off everything so it can't get the sunlight it deserves, the tree will finally die. Very good. What else can you do? Oh, there's a hundred ways to kill a tree. So what's the matter, Protestant Catholic? <coughs> yeah, no difference. All, all each does is pride himself <coughs> in stupidity. Hey, look, <clears throat> does it change you if you die by an atomic bomb, a 22 bullet, a shot of arsenic, prussic acid, or your head chopped off? You're dead. That's what they don't understand. I prefer not to have any of them. I prefer to live with God. <clears throat> he went back, but communion is called the Lord's Supper. Now, a lot of people, they just want to take it in the morning. Didn't say in the Bible it was breakfast. How many of you people had breakfast, communion? We had it all the time. Talk about stupid. Shh. <clears throat> Man. I had yeast infection in my blood. I sure must have had it in my brain, too. And how these people today, how can they call the Lord's Supper? They cut out supper, and now they call it dinner, nonsense, supper. <clears throat> it's right in the Bible. Now, always a dispute in the Bible times, it was a dispute then. But, you know, the words of the Lord's Supper, dispute then, is dispute now. The people misunderstood the Lord's Supper when they came to the table. Paul told those Corinthians they were coming and getting drunk at the Lord's table. See, it was misunderstood right then. He said, if you want to eat, eat at home. Another thing was misunderstood what it was, sinners, and a man living in sin came and took communion. And that was misunderstood, a man living with his mother. Actually, I think it was his stepmother, but it might have been incestual. I'm not gonna. God only knows. <clears throat> Did you know at the time of um, Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom, that um, the time of homosexuality, when the homos were running the government, they were running it now, and Lot's daughter had sex, incestual intercourse with, her, with, uh, with their father? And that was at the time of the burning. Well, incest is on the spread in America. And so don't you think that it will be maybe not legal? I can't believe they'll really legalize it. But they'll keep making more and more ways that they'll overlook it. Because, see, that's what this is all about. <clears throat> And there were divisions among them, and they were still taking communion. He said, understand that you walk like the rest of the Gentiles. There's friction among you, especially in Cephas' house and so forth. You walk like the, like the Gentiles. It was misunderstood. Communion has always been misunderstood. Now, I could go on that for hours, but we want to get to foot washing. Now, Rome does not call it communion. They call it mass, a holy mass. They don't take communion. They take a mass. It's a mass. A mass certain uh, takes the real meaning from communion. A mass means hoping. Mass means in meaning hoping that in doing this that God will forgive them of their sins by taking the literal body of Christ which a priest turns to the body and blood of Christ. Taking that hoping God will admit their sins. It's a mass. The Protestants call it communion. Communion means thanksgiving. The Catholic is taking a mass in the mass hoping God forgives them for their evil doing. The Protestant takes with thanksgiving for what's already been done with communion with God, communion with him. It's already been done. The Catholic is hoping it's done. The Protestant says it's already done. The Catholic is wondering if his sins are forgiven. The Protestant confesses they've been forgiven. He's free. A communion is communing with God. And these articles that we take, not in hopes that our sins are forgiven, they are forgiven. One is hope, the other is faith. One's hoping he's right, the other knows he's right. <clears throat> See? The other one hoping, but he doesn't know where he stands. 
The other one knows he's right because he knows what God said. That's it. That's the difference. So when you're just hoping, be careful. When you, when you, but when you know, then go on. See, then you're, then you're in communion with God. Protestant is, he says he's forgiven and he knows it. The Catholic has mass, hopes he'll be forgiven. It's just like this. One is a beggar hoping everything's all right. The other is a beggar thanking for what's already been done. Both are beggars. Now that's good and I'll talk about it. But one's begging, hoping he'll get it. The other beggar knows he's got it and thanks him for giving it to him. Now there's a difference. That's communion. See, yes, sir. One is hoping he's forgiven. The other knows he's forgiving and gives thanks. Now listen, in the last day, <coughs> it said you're wretched and miserable. <coughs> and the word wretched, as far as I recall, it's one of those words, says that you're standing there as a beggar begging and don't even know it. <coughs> it means that everybody outside of a little bride, that's the truth now, let's get right down to business. Everybody outside of a little bride is simply taking mass. <coughs> the Protestants should give up. Never mind what you call it, go back to the Catholics, <coughs> call it the body of Christ, <coughs> call transubstantiation a good thing, <coughs> go ahead and do it, because they're already into it. Because Revelation chapter 3 says, you are beggars begging. See? Now, the ones who come out were also beggars, knowing that they didn't have what they thought they had, knowing they needed something. Now, having heard the voice of God, are in direct communion with God. And when the prophet met him face to face, believe it or not, we also met him face to face. Why? Because we believe like the prophet. What would, what would it matter if a prophet met God face to face? Tell me. <clears throat> you'd go away scared, you'd go insane. But what if God talked to the prophet? Then the prophet talked to us. Show me a difference. There isn't a difference. Now that may shake the stars out of you, but that's the truth. It's the same word. The prophet's vindication was not for himself. That only gave him the authority and what it needed to bring that to us so he'd stand there in the power knowing it wasn't a word. It was more than a word. <clears throat> it wasn't just Rima. It was Rima become Logos. There isn't any difference, brother and sister. Like Brother Branham that time going to pray for somebody. And what he said, what he said, like go lay hands on this man. But he said, look at those hands. He said, they're unclean. He said, they're unworthy. But he said, you know, there are times when I go and lay hands on somebody because God said they get healed. And the voice said, aren't they the same hands? What are you talking about? The man was literally crushed. I think his spleen was gone. I don't know. God only knew what's wrong with the guy. A wall had fallen on him. <clears throat> Went to the hospital and prayed. Jumped out of bed at home. Same hands. Same God. Amen. Same word. One body. Coming to full headship. That's right, shall we? <clears throat> the deacons come forward, and those that are going to take care of the service, song service, and these other things. <clears throat> and as we take communion, the ladies, of course, go back in the hall back there and start washing feet. The men will come just as quickly as they can. <clears throat> and we just missed as quickly as we can. Heavenly Father, once more we stand before you and we pray, Lord God, that as we try to honor you, and we know our honor, Lord, in considering the depth of seeing a prophet, his sobriety, his sincerity, the great ability add in projecting what we know to be a sincere spirit of worship. We lack so much, Lord, and yet we know we are one with it, Lord, and just waiting for the day when that will become so real to us that we too will enter into part of what he had as he stood there before the world in that sobriety, that calmness, that knowingness, Lord. We don't expect to stand before the world as he said, if he told me to go raise George Washington today, I'd go to the grave and the armies could shoot me down if I couldn't raise him, Lord. We're not expecting that. We know that that could happen because of what we've seen. That's no problem. Our big problem, Lord, is 
Is there more of this word, life, to be released in us, giving us more of that sobriety and genuineness, Lord, toward you as God, great God, and toward our brothers and sisters as part of that body of this hour, and toward every word, so that we stand in the balance of the integrity of it, Lord. That's what we desire. Help us, O oh God. Let each one judge himself coming forward tonight to partake of these emblems. Faith in the crucified, yet living, resurrected one. Knowing a prophet was sent, and the spirit of that one here in this midst revealing these things to us. So now, even though it comes reading the page or from voices of men, no less the authoritative, powerful voice of God. Help us, Lord, to, to enter into That's where the prophet was. We'd like to get to a good measure there. We're asking you, as the people partake, may this be so as never before, and in foot washing as never before. We're growing and going on. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lord. <clears throat> start out singing 192 in the hymns of glorious praise the first two verses to 192 and those from the back if you want to just go ahead and start <coughs> coming up <coughs> 192 the first two verses my faith looks up to thee Glorious praise near the cross, there a precious fountain.
praise him.